Yeah, so hi, um, my name is Mello Baku. Thanks, yeah, so I, I'm uh, sitting on a sofa. I'm a brown skinned girl, woman, with black curly hair and wearing a knitted rainbow pinkish jumper. Mm -hmm. And glasses, brown glasses. Welcome to another episode of the Onyx Takeover for Disability Arts Online and today I'm speaking to uh, Mello Baku, the fantastic Mello Baku, who is, well actually do you want to um, yeah. tell the listening, yeah. watching public yeah. in, in your own words? Yeah, I'm an artist and uh, into multi whatever Anti-disciplinary. <laughs> Anti-disciplinary, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So I probably mostly do performance of some kind, or I ha have done mostly, and that being mostly music-based and words. So moving from kind of singer-songwriting to doing a lot more experimental kind of soundscape stuff and some jazz, and then later kind of more poetry and spoken word. I've kind of brought that back together a little bit more recently and creative writing and then visual how I know you mm -hmm. I show up from the fine art days um, visual and uh, digital art mixed media art that's one of my little paintings but yeah and a little bit of video editing and visual manipulation mm -hmm. animation stuff and theatre as well local theatre shows lots and lots of yeah. different pies and lots of fingers in yeah. lots of different pies as well yeah. fantastic so um I, as you know the uh, theme for the takeover is aram is rest mm. uh, but it's not rest as in you know kind of the rest that we take every evening it's mu mm. it's much more about um how rest fo uh, fits into our practice so yeah. if you could tell me a little bit about um your creative process and maybe a little bit about how rest fits into that creative process mm. it's hard to kind of like strip back apart you know the layers that don't um speak specifically even to like some of the mental health challenges i have i have or conditions that i've had recently and things like that because that all plays into it um and just kind of all things being equal very similar to you that i do many things which i wouldn't necessarily have considered to be a way of resting but I think, you know, as you said, rest can be actually that kind of like, let's say it's boredom that comes in from doing one thing, one thing. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, I can't keep doing this one thing. And so it's, it is a rest. There is a re there is a kind of alleviation of going into something else. And um, yeah, for a while, um, I was trying to kind of find out what, how, what that was more. I had this kind of analogy of, you know, when you're making a garden, Mm -hmm. and um, there's these companion plants so I can't remember what it is but it's like you, if you have the potatoes then maybe you put the marigolds next to them because they right. take a black fly away from the mm -hmm. or this one helps this one this changes the chemistry of the soil so I did have this idea that I noticed that when I was doing a music project and I kept coming away from this studio project thinking I'm procrastinating and I was just like started to make little videos while I'm like oh I can't do that anymore but then I really did notice that that was restful and it was a way of allowing the mind to come out of the auditory and even just the fact that this was a paid job with a deadline and go into this just creating, creating a little um, video fun thing. And then kind of like, OK, you've done that for a while. It's better than just like fogging out on Netflix. And then it feels a bit achievement as well. But like I say, for a while, I, was I thought maybe there's a formula here that like you have music editing and then you need to. If I could work out, you know, that then it would be painting, those two go together. So you could sort of take two jobs on at the time, mm -hmm. or two commissions that kind yeah. of complemented, but I don't know if it's even as formulaic as that, and I also wasn't able to, it, mm. you know, it's serendipity sometimes, isn't I, it? I think um, you've hit on something quite important in the sense mm. that a lot of neurodivergent artists um, can't really stick to one medium or they mm. can't see mediums as mm -mm. things in little boxes your visual art will move into something video yes. oriented or sa sa even sound oriented there's often the tendency to over connect as well so I'll be always sort of 
exploring the same themes but on different levels so also sometimes like when I was working for or with with the spark arts for children and then also commissioned by I'm doing kind of work for naught to five-year-olds mm. but also maybe a little bit other work that's a bit higher so using language and pre-language and then at the same time I was working on like some of my stuff maybe creative writing whether it's around around um issues around like black lives matter stuff or um my upbringing uh, in a cult <laughs> and but I found that I am still doing the same work even for children I'm, I'm exploring like what does freedom mean what does being tied in mean what does it mean when you're told you know what does it mean when you're stuck in a jumper and you can't get out you know and things like this you know for children with this show um, when I was working with dancers but then I'm I'm realising oh that's the same as what I'm exploring over there as well so they're inextricable um, but there is that rest of going, especially into like non-verbal work with the babies and children where, you know, everything's a story. You don't have to be saying, and then this happened. You can just tell the story of trying to get in and out of clothes and you can use just like voice and sound. And then you go into a dense world, maybe where you write a really like oh, a poem. Uh, so, yeah, there's a rest even within um, who I work with and for facilitate workshops with um often with um target groups that, that include mental health service users um of which i'm one so fellow ones and actually as i'm creatively facilitating mm -hmm. some some groups are, are just they're just amazing and they they bring some things back and then i always have a practice where if i manage to deliver the little invitation or provocation i'll set the timer and i try and write with everyone right and that's partially because I'm not as prepared as I'd like to be and I really want to make sure that I did fully understand my own exercise maybe I didn't have time to do it properly yeah, yeah. so I sit there with them and I do it and then sometimes I might if we've got five minutes I might sort of say okay I'm finding that this is the same this is for me as anyone else and you know so I kind of move with whoever I work with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and people occasionally say oh it's like it's all about me I have heard that, you know, even if I facilitate others and I'm like, yes, it, uh, that's, uh, yes, it is. Because I think that's where we excel when, when we're centred in our practice. Because the story of me, if I'm sharing it, it's interest, it's, then it's, it's, it has its own integrity, doesn't it, for yeah. someone else. So I always find that's, that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. And then what they bring back is, phew, can blow my mind. And we're always um, trying to measure the world ourselves it, we're, we're yes. trying to kind of get a measure of the world and it's always good to ask people and work mm. with them rather than kind of because there are, is no set dimension for the world you know yes. we, we we think there are we think yes. we should be doing this and mm -hmm. we shouldn't be doing this but yes. um no one's really a mind reader and we're, and we're yes and you know especially through poetry you come to see but other one other things as well what people write about the story of is it always the story of me or the story mm. of everything because I, even if I told the story of a Sudanese um, man, <laughs> I just made up in another lifetime, mm -hmm. I'm telling it, like, it, I can only do it from here. Yeah. So this comes through in storytelling. Mm -hmm. And it, that's, that's different to the story of, like, uh, do I take it on me to be so disrespectful to tell someone's story? I don't mean it like that. I just mean, yeah, actually, I mean the opposite like so why not just tell my story because maybe a Sudanese man will go oh and then it's like that for me but it's not that mm -hmm. I might talk about the story of putting makeup on my face and there could be something in it like about masking or about the violence of the mute of the of the, of the of the makeup industry that comes through and then it has a thread I've had to consolidate somehow which is not my you know as you can hear I tend to spiral out into a, and then I have to kind of bring something that's a bit more structured mm -hmm. and then see how it works. And then they come back with, oh, that was difficult for me. Or that was really easy. That's so interesting. Or have you thought about we could do the next one? And it's so great. Mm -hmm. So that's another rest resting place for me. And I really love that they're on Zoom as well. Mm -hmm. So as a practical thing, I'm starting to find a lot of rest in this online thing that most people I know really moan about. Mm -hmm. It's been so restful for me because I don't have to be like, out in the world of form the time the place which bag am i using did yeah. i bring this and that you know 
let's kind of get ready from about here up. Yeah. <laughs> and a beautiful democratic space yeah. with everyone in a box. Mm -hmm. Get muted if you over speak. And even for me to um, set that, I have to then honour it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's something in that I'm not always convinced that it's very, that it's a real world. Right. That I'm looking at. So a beautiful detachment, not unkind, but just a kind of like settling down of, you haven't got loads of energies in the room and you're like, who do you look at first? You're just like... Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that idea of um, viewing people and seeing people mm. becomes very different as well. Because mm. when you're in a, in, a, in a real life space, when you're looking at someone, they know you're looking at them, at you. Yes, you that's know. true. And uh, you see yourself. So it can be quite, quite interesting and odd, mm -hmm. but I enjoy it. Um, yeah. I think it's like I'm I'm here and I feel I have more control as well. Like as in for the anxieties and yeah. things that I sometimes yeah. experience. And then I love that you know I'm always inviting people to have their cameras on if they can because it's so lovely to have that energy. So mm -hmm. you know it's not we're just not you know because we share we share our work. Mm -hmm. But then also. You know, if you let us know you're there and your camera's off, that's fine as well. Yeah. So I just, I really love that because usually in the room I can't just stop. Okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah. Can we talk started. a little bit about your um, current recent work? Is it on our Yeah. Wish? So I was developing with Spark Arts for Children, mm -hmm. uh, invitation from particularly like Adele at the Spark had been following my work and then mm -hmm. sort of brought Tara into that. So there was quite a sort of a relationship that she'd seen me do a lot with the spark so before this development opportunity came there was a lot of support from that wonderful organization the spark arts for children the oa and um yeah they'd kind of supported other bits and pop bobs that i'd done and actually i think i simultaneously applied because i was very much encouraged to for some work like as a resident musician in nurseries at the same time as joining their development scheme so these things were in tandem but it meant um that i was in placement with children mm -hmm. trying things out so that's really where it started and um so all the little bits and bobs i tried out musically with children were being being trialed and are indeed um how they responded so you know when they talk about collaborative um what do they call it when someone when they're making the work with you yeah collaboration co uh, um, there's a thing co-creation co -creation, yeah and i think it's like one of them words but i mean there was they were telling me you know because children will tell you so at the end of something where we're like the heartbeat you know the rhythm walking to the rhythm of the heartbeat what can we touch tap 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 and then we come here and then we tap tap tap, tap and then we found at the end it's like um at the end of this is where we belong and then, then they start going oh oh, oh, oh you know so yeah, they're literally yeah. the co-creation their children they just bring it you're like oh okay let me follow you so it's i mean it's how they do it in lots of different i don't know disciplines like montessori so you have to kind of follow children to an extent if you mm -hmm. want to be creative so yeah that's 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 how it started um can't think like it went into there was a little album of children's songs um that then i started working on animations for and then there was an actual specific R and D with a team about maybe making a whole show that incorporated everything I do. The album is called Umar Wish. With little kitty tunes. Um, so yeah, and I'm holding up a postcard that's got like a little collage mm -hmm. of uh, children singing sounds of the song. And then with you know like Arts Council coming in and then it just kept building. Mm -hmm. And we did half of the R and D in lockdown, which is very interesting. And then quite challenging. And then we actually had a, a national tour. I well, I and then the spark kind of the relationship grew and they were co-producing. So um, we went to about seven venues, and it was very different from all the like little children's songs mm -hmm. because actually I showed was interesting. There was a point where I was like, I love this. It's beautiful work. But how many times like good morning how are you which is so beautiful with my ukulele mm -hmm. but i also wanted more rich things and more culturally rich work and so i made a deal with myself like i have to really and everyone again it goes back to the self thing i have to be getting something out of it because i also know that's when people love watching me when i'm in my feels mm -hmm. that's when i love watching an artist i'm in my feels strongly there's no point they're doing like mm -hmm. i can't do the eyes and teeth if i don't feel it you know hey kids 
so I had to be so this um, show which I the feedback we had is that people you know who run children's theatres like we've not seen anything like it um, it was mostly um, you know visibly melanated people had a Helda um, dancing from Portugal but you know Africa via Portugal and uh, Anna Paz as well and um, who's Portuguese Africa um, Congolese I think maybe um, mm -hmm. Louise Catarega, who kind of came in like kind of mental consultant, you know, can't really afford what Force she can bring. <laughs> yeah, so I, she, I ended up naming her as the project elder. Yeah. So she was kind of like this elder of the project because dance being my discipline that I don't, the discipline I'm not really au fait with as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of vocabulary stuff. Although that's part of the strength because it ended up being kind of like hip hop capoeira stuff, mm -hmm. which is wicked. And uh, Leonie de Barriga, who's, um, yeah, same like half Trini girl, uh, do, uh, helping with the visuals, so which I was involved in, but she was genius. So it's the you know the team that we ended up with, and two other amazing women, Sophie Fishwick, who's very shamanic kind of practice on drums and percussion, and Rachel Rachel Johnson, who I lovingly refer to as my jazz wife. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, beautiful soul keys, and then we had uh, Fino Lopes, who's Portuguese. I was like everyone's talking Portuguese on this project accidentally on a uh, stick bass. So we did, we did have one, uh, well, Helga and, and Fino, but it's a very kind of beautiful project. So it was visuals um, on these uh, floaty kind of curtain screens, three, I wanted to wrap around a bit, so mm. just about managed it on these frames. And the last two, because we couldn't buy enough projectors, <laughs> I actually sort of painted them in a similar way, so they're kind of swishy, swishy curtains, so the whole space is, is in curtains. And... Um, projections these amazing sort of flickering projections that provided most of the lighting as well mm. and sort of dance on the floor depending on the venue and maybe bouncing off uh helder was, a, was dancing um with the music so he was kind of embodying me and right. i was doing a lot of live looping with a live band that's that's hella tricky um but they yeah great how they how we did it so it was just wonderful and even the musicians ended up kind of being very much performing mm -hmm. um little things you know just standing up like woo and like responding and mm -hmm. and little, yeah so it was it's just a gorgeous gorgeous thing when i talk about it i want it was almost like a sound bath jazz improv yeah and it's celebrating the sounds that children make yeah so yeah i do feel and like four children which is and amazing it was four, it was four early years that you could bring yeah. your your week old baby in mm -hmm. and that was the idea that it would have something to them and the only you know feedback that we got bless that i understood it parents are like you know it didn't didn't really learn anything like it would have been nice to, to find out what the instruments were and if we weren't sure you know it would have been nice if more, more interaction they could find out like and and they want them to learn things and it was like yeah, yeah, it's not Sometimes what we're doing. Sometimes it's better just to have a nice time, like for the children to have a, a great yeah, time and be energised. Yeah, I understood it. Yeah, it. it's like, yeah, but it's literally yeah. for their, like, it's their language. And then that was just, you know, obviously we dwell on those small things because mm -hmm. it does say something, like maybe you have to to be more, like, if we did, if I did it again, like present it more mm -hmm. for what it is. So. But that level of investment and the richness that you're bringing in mm. for children is amazing because one thing that i've noticed mm. is um people send tend to kind of see children's work as um yeah lower as, lesser and yeah. i had that struggle you know an artistic ego isn't it because you want the people who whatever you know more cerebral or more da da da, da and you can yeah it's it's a way it's a it's it, there is something to that but i think that's where i got very inspired very much championed by um adele i'd say adele absalom and then also, you know, carried forward by the whole of the spark mm -hmm. is this idea, <laughs> wow, that children are innately creative and that they deserve art yeah. and they don't yeah. need to be like, and actually those things are sweet as well, like, because they do like Baby Shark and they do like polka dots and they do like rainbows and flowers mm -hmm. and unicorns, but they are capable of understanding something that's very profound. Mm -hmm. They haven't found, maybe they can get more profound than we can. They haven't yeah. maybe found... Yeah. They haven't unlearned yeah. profundity think, yet, you know. So I really it loved that challenge to yeah. to make it very rich and multi-layered. Mm -hmm. Also, you make work for babies and you make work for adults because they come mm -hmm. with them, mm -hmm. and they and the target audience has a much better experience if the adult is on board. What I really liked about Omar Wash was yeah. um, the fact that normally people think children's work should be referential to the adult world, and this wasn't. Right. 
this was much more it about it wasn't but it was multi-layered but it was, it was um, no but it was referencing referencing children's experiences yes it was saying you uh, saying if you want if you yeah it's saying adults come and hear yeah. this world because yeah. yeah. you know usually even babel babel or yeah. like sometimes i know there's one where there was a um a, a child with quite s extreme disability which wasn't something that we took on particularly with that tour but mm -hmm. open to it but didn't put it forward as a specific to those audiences necessarily because yeah i just think that might need another and even more you know we r d but there was a child who's very like very vocal oh, why? and very loud and then sometimes sounding distressed and i've done a bit of work um, with bamboozle as well mm -hmm. which, you know he's saying it's very helpful to um be able to hold that and not be like oh <laughs> like should we stop or shall we uh just carry on through you know and it's like can we hold can we bring this into the loop you know how can we bring this into like a loop and will it be mimicry will it be so it's very beautiful, like sacred work, but in a way, I don't mean to like elevate myself there, but the work, the work of, that other people do more than I do, of working with holding space for all the sounds that babies make, but also others that might not sound right to us, or they're crying, or they're, and, and one of the parts of my show is that I'm, I'm copying them. Yeah. And we just think it's so rude to copy, but children are copying. We're all copiers. But we went through jazz as well work. for a long time. Yeah, I mean, mostly that's um, just a basic, like, American songbook. I say just, I'm sorry. American songbook is amazing. You know, a lot of it was kind of up north or any sort, anywhere but London. Mm -hmm. And with much, like, older guys and uh, more straight, white, older audiences. And maybe in community centres or backs of pubs. Right. Um doing um and often the bands would be more towards classic and trad jazz which is not my favorite but it's fun some of it's great i've learned so much through you know the lives of betty smith and i you know everything is to be honored um but creatively i wanted to go more you know exploratory but i also found there was a barrier for me because i don't read music mm -hmm. I've picked up a lot of music. I can play guitar, I understand chords and that they have extensions and sometimes I understand those extensions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've heard a hell of, you know, there's this circle of fifths apparently. This is just another dimension. Jazz is another language which I honour. Mm -hmm. And um, I've learned, picked up bits of vocabulary from sure. the musicians. Could you give us Oh, what, a some little bit of... What, a bit of jazz? <laughs> yeah, a bit of jazz or, you know, some a little flavour of your... Maybe I'll do a bit of looping but I'll maybe do it with a jazz standard. But usually I'd, I'd always work with jazz musician, musicians to do jazz, but then there's some things. We'll see how it comes out. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Malabaku. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ashok. All right, so uh, it's Black History Month, y'all. Uh, so I thought I'll do something relating to that, and also it's a fairly new piece that... Um, relates to um, that and it's from this, the, the, the music called Mo, Be Mo Better Blues. There's a track in the film Mo Better Blues with Bramford Marcellus and Terence Blanchard, um, song called Mo Better Blues. Um, so I worked it around that and I wrote some poetry around that. So a bit of spoken word. I'm doing a shorter version of it and we'll see how it goes. It get a bit of looping and, and spoken and the idea is around how you know would like say say their name and things like that it's very difficult for memory people without memories and things to hold names and this idea that we've got to remember everybody's names could become very very difficult and sometimes what I love about um, Caribbean African and, and many cultures um, music comes into it with with, with grief and with with uh, holding the names and with these events that music and, you know, the job of music and musicians, they hold, they can hold the names. So that's where that, this idea came from. Let the music hold. When the walls sagged with names, bronze plates re-etched, stones replaced and shrines overflowed, with candles melting into wreaths of faces, school photos of smiles stretched over the years and above blazers, crested with arms under neat baby fros, in silver frames, forever contained, firstly for pride of place on mantelpieces and finally to mark the fall, the X, where countless knees gave way on seeing blood, each name a howl that drowned the scream of sirens. 
All the names were held in the cradle of chords that gave their coming together into the next coming together. The golden thread of trumpet passed its story to saxophone. Conversation traded lament and jokes, smile and cry, hand over fist. Grace nodded acquiescence. And in each movement, fingers remembered and breath anchored into the floor that pulsed with notes only wood could make so warm. Head bowed, hand bowed over this line of wound wound threads. No need to fret, content to be an unseen driver, but rhythm to lean into this long railroad track home. The names rise within the song to show their lives, each one revealing the face of God. music hold your names so I can let go this love will never change that's all I need to know each one reveals the face of God colored olive black olive brown a rainbow of earth, soil, clay, copper, bronze, gold. They dance in the song like those who followed the golden thread of melody only for joy and not because they're bound. And we who still chase the golden thread or are bound by it. Like mystics, we hear them in every pulse, vibration, overtone. Like mystics see faces in flames, they wish to have the courage to join and pray they never will. Something moves when it is seen. Faces shift. They sacrifice their names to the ones who named and suckled them. We are warmed. All the names are held in the cradle of chords that give their coming together into the next coming together. The golden thread of trumpet passes its story to saxophone. Bass bows to the hand that rides the bars. Piano notes run a little ahead unlimited by their 12 note cages, saying, remember, we are free to play. So I can let go. This love will never change. It's all I need to know. Let the music hold your So